Hey, it's Jordan with Status Coup. More of the Epstein documents, specifically uh, legal discovery, so emails, depositions that were taken, were released late last night. And a very, very interesting email exchange that does not look pretty good for former President Bill Clinton uh, was released. Uh, naturally, it's not getting a ton of attention in the mainstream media, and Bill Clinton's office refusing to comment. Hmm. Uh, let me tell you what I'm talking about here because it's pretty significant. Um, this is an exchange between Virginia Jufri, who is one of uh, the uh, victims of Jeffrey Epstein's uh, sex trafficking ring, uh, and Sharon Churcher, uh, who I believe was a journalist uh, in the United Kingdom. Uh, they're communicating in 2011. And this is uh, the original email here uh, with Sharon Churcher uh, talking to Virginia. Jufri, uh, they are discussing basically um, how to get more attention on Jufri's story as she had a book on Epstein and his abuse of her and others coming out. Um, Sharon writes, I would let Vanity Fair buy your picture via Brad. Uh, Brad would be her attorney. The big gamble would be to let him give them a statement saying your interviews with us were accurately reported and you have no more to say at this time about how you were, quote, sex trafficked to P.A. and other men. A P.A. is Prince Andrew and other men, including two of the world's most respected politicians. Both of those names are blacked out, as well as women the scenes with Jelaine, et cetera, because you are writing a book. Don't we deserve to know who those names are? Two of the world's most respected politicians. So that is uh, an email from Sharon Churcher uh, and Virginia Jufre uh, responds to that uh, later in the day. Good points, all of them. I am looking at both sides of the picture. On the upside, it will give exposure to build up publicity for the case and the story. But like you said, it must be carefully written and not give any notions about the upcoming book and or any new info. When I was doing some research into Vanity Fair yesterday, it does concern me uh, that what they could want to write about me, considering that Bill Clinton walked into Vanity Fair and threatened them not to write sex trafficking articles about his good friend, Jeffrey Epstein. Should I be asking what is this story they're writing pertaining to? Well, that's pretty serious if that happened. I don't know if it happened. Uh, on its face, kind of hard to believe a former president would walk in to a media uh, newsroom making demands, uh, but it is Bill Clinton. Uh, he's certainly bended the rules, shall we say, before. Uh, to save his hide, uh, including perjury, uh, back in the Lewinsky days. Uh, but Virginia Jufri, whose story on Epstein, uh, Maxwell, and their whole trafficking ring has checked out uh, overwhelmingly. Uh, she did kind of, I don't want to say retract, but come out and say she might have misidentified Alan Dershowitz. But on most other things, she has been truthful, and her story has uh, proven to be true. Um, so there's some moving parts to this. Obviously, we don't know if it's true that the former president uh, went in there and uh, demanded them not uh, write about his good friend, Jeffrey Epstein. But let's take a look. Uh, this is um, a clip from this morning on CNN where Vicki Ward, who was a journalist who wrote a, a profile about Epstein uh, back in the early 2000s for Vanity Fair, um, she has been public that Vanity Fair uh, punted, uh, would not publish um, on the record allegations she had from two sisters who were victims of um, Epstein's abuse and rape. Uh, let's take a listen to what uh, Vicki Ward had to say uh, about the allegations that Bill Clinton had walked in, uh, demanded to Vanity Fair that they not publish this story or the allegations on Epstein. Joining us now is investigative journalist Vicki Ward. She was one of the first reporters to investigate Epstein and spoke with him for many hours. She was contributing editor to Vanity Fair for 11 years. So first, this allegation, Graydon Carter just saying this did not happen. Can you give us some context here? Sure. Um, I never heard that that happened. 
what I wonder is if Virginia Roberts is hearing um, gossip and getting it, um, getting it slightly wrong, because what did happen um, back in 2002, when I was profiled to uh, write about Jeffrey Epstein, actually profiled to write about his finances. And remember, this is a time when nobody knew who this guy was, right. other than he lived in the most expensive townhouse in Manhattan. Uh, I learned not of the horrific sex crimes going on that we now know about increasingly in more detail. I did hear about the story of two sisters, uh, Maria and Annie Farmer, um, and they were on the record ex detailing to me at the time the abuse they had suffered at the hands of Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein. When Jeffrey Epstein realized that I was in possession of, of their allegations, he appeared in the offices of Vanity Fair. I knew about this because the fact checker who was fact checking my piece at the time sent me an email saying, oh my God, he's standing here in the office. And, you know, I've, I've said before, you know, the, the farmer sister's allegations were suddenly cut from the piece that was ultimately published. Um, I suspect, you know, I never met Virginia Jeffrey until 2019, long after these papers were filed. I never spoke to her, I didn't know of her existence. I wish that I had, because in fact, she was escaping from Jeffrey Epstein's clutches at the exact time that I was trying to deal with him and write this uh, profile. Uh, but I suspect that some version of the story I've just told you probably reached its way to her, and that might be what she's to referring be clear, to. You're Okay, well, if that's the case, if Epstein himself and not President Bill Clinton uh, had appeared uh, in the office demanding that they not write uh, a story or include in a puff piece about him any allegations of sexual abuse, you think a former president of the United States might come out strongly, right? <laughs> and deny that he ever went there. I sure would. Um, well, Let's take a listen uh, if President Bill Clinton uh, is speaking out on this. CNN's Gene Casares is here with more details. Uh, Gene, what kind of documents um, are being unsealed and what are they telling us beyond the names that we that are continuing to come Right, out? many different documents, you know, normal discovery in the course of a civil lawsuit, but you've got depositions mm -hmm. that are being unsealed. You've got emails that are being unsealed. And there is one email that was unsealed, it's from 2011. Virginia Jufre, who is the one that brought the suit against uh, Maxwell, defamation yes. suit, she had a really close confidant, a friend. It was a reporter, but the it was, her name was Sharon Churcher, and she was helping her get interviews or get a book deal, get her story out. And it appears as though that Churcher had wanted her to go to Vanity Fair to do an interview for them. And here is an email just unsealed mm. about what the response was from Virginia. She said, quote, considering that B. Clinton walked into Vanity Fair and threatened them not to write sex trafficking articles about his good friend, Jeffrey Epstein. So obviously she had reservations. Well, we at CNN, we contacted uh, Graydon Carter. He was the editor of Vanity Fair from 1992 through 2017. And he said us, quote, it categorically did not happen. We also reached out to Clinton's representative who did not want to comment on this latest accusation, but did refer us back to Wednesday when they said it's been 20 years since President Clinton has had any contact with Epstein. So we'll get to Mr. Graydon Carter, a longtime editor who was in social circles with a lot of these people uh, in New York City back in the day. Uh, but I don't know. I want to be fair. I'm certainly no fan of the Clintons. I think they had uh, a big, big, big part of our neoliberal neoliberal hellscape we live in, United Corporations of America. Uh, but you want to be fair. Obviously, you don't want to report or suggest he uh, walked into Vanity Fair and tried to or successfully uh, stopped them from exposing or writing about Epstein's sexual abuse. Uh, but wouldn't you come out if you're the former president and say that never happened? I 100% I deny these allegations. I never 
spoke with Vanity Fair. I never walked into Vanity Fair pertaining to Jeffrey Epstein. It's a pretty simple thing. Could do it in a sentence or two. The fact that he's not doesn't necessarily mean he did do that. But in my view, in my spidey sense, Bill Clinton does have some things to worry about. So he wants to say as little as possible about anything pertaining to Jeffrey Epstein, even making a comment that might be true and help him that he didn't walk into Vanity Fair and kill a story about his good friend Jeffrey Epstein because he has bigger concerns about information coming out pertaining to him, Jeffrey Epstein, and underage girls. I don't know. What do you think? Tell me in the comments. If, if Don't you think a former president, if he did not do that, uh, would come out strongly saying, I never walked into Vanity Fair? Uh, that's just not true. I never had anything to do with uh, killing a story uh, pertaining to Jeffrey Epstein. But I want to get to Graydon Carter. Uh, this is a little bit of a long section of a New Yorker piece, uh, but it's important, so stick with me here, because I'm not sure I could believe Graydon Carter when he says something categori categorically didn't happen. This is from the New Yorker, a piece about why Vanity Fair didn't run the Epstein story back in the early 2000s, meaning didn't run the allegations against him in the story. Ward, who is the journalist uh, you saw two clips ago, um, she wrote the piece for Vanity Fair, uh, the blonde hair journalist, uh, in the early 2000s. Ward was soon alerted to something even darker about Epstein. A friend told her that an artist named Maria Farmer had a, bad, quote, bad experience with Epstein and urged Ward to reach out to the young woman. Farmer, who had met Epstein and Maxwell while she was a 25-year-old graduate student at the New York Academy of Art, had been hired by Epstein as an art advisor. Farmer told Ward that in 1996, she stayed at an Ohio mansion with Epstein and Maxwell, where Epstein had sexually assaulted her while Maxwell held her hand. Epstein and Maxwell had also taken an interest in her younger sister, Annie. Ward talked to Annie, too, who told her that the same that same year, when she was 16, she had stayed with Epstein and Maxwell at Epstein's New Mexico ranch. Maxwell had told Annie to remove her clothes and massaged her breasts. Maxwell also showed her how to give Epstein a foot massage, which she did. Annie also said that Epstein had entered the bedroom while she was staying, where she was staying, and pressed his body against hers. In 2002, Annie and Maria Farmer spoke to Ward on the record, as did their mother, who said that her daughters had told her about distressing encounters with Maxwell and Epstein. According to Ward, she also spoke to two other sources, David Schaefer and Eric Fischel, who knew Maria through the New York Academy of Art and had some knowledge of what had happened in Ohio. Neither Fischel nor Schaefer responded to my request for comment, but in 2019, Fischel told the Times that Maria had called him from Epstein's house and described a disturbing physical encounter with Epstein. I just kept telling Maria, you've got to get out of here, Fischel said. The article that appeared in Vanity Fair in March 2003 did not include the farmers' allegations, noting only that Epstein tended to surround himself with young women. Ward claims that this was a result of Epstein's influence on Carter after Epstein visited Vanity Fair's office, she claims. Carter told her that Epstein was, quote, sensitive about the young women. Epstein denied the farmers' allegations, and according to Ward, Carter said, I believed him. Carter, who again is the former Vanity Fair editor who denies that Bill Clinton ever walked into the office and uh, tried to kill, a, kill the part of the story about the allegations against Epstein, tells a different story. I edited the first draft of Miss Ward's story. There was no mention of young women in it. When she tried to add these facts late in the process, we were about to go on press. Her editor, our chief of research, and our legal editor, editor all felt she did not have credible evidence that would stand up in court. After Carter sent this statement, Ward shared emails between her and Vanity Fair staffers. In a pattern that became familiar, the email indicated that dates and details Ward had previously provided were incorrect. She went on to offer four different accounts of when the farmers were removed from the piece, eventually admitting that she didn't remember what happened and then returning to her initial claim. But the emails also showed that Ward presented the magazine with their allegations by early December, weeks before the article closed. In mid-December, Ward was discussing the farmer with fact checkers and a photo editor asked for assistance obtaining Maria Farmer's photos. When I shared this timeline with Carter, he replied in an email, 
Well, this is my mistake then. Remember, this was almost 20 years ago. He then suggested that he had not been involved in the decision-making about the article. Huh. So first, Mr. Carter said uh, the story was about to go to press. The journalist uh, added the allegations kind of last minute, and we didn't have enough time to vet it. But then emails show the journalist had these two women, on sisters, on the record, and their mother weeks before it was going to go to press. And uh, they were even up to the stage of trying to get photos uh, of the sisters, meaning it was going to be included. Something happened because that doesn't line up, that timeline. And, you know, Carter and other Vanity Fair people have attacked the journalist and said she wasn't a good journalist and they didn't trust her, blah, 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 blah. I don't know if that's true or not. All I know is ask, ask uh, journalists who went after the Harvey Weinstein story for a long time. It's not easy to get victims on the record, rightly so. It's a brave thing to do, to go on the record about heinous sexual abuse. But it seems that Vanity Fair had several weeks a head start before their story was to go to press. Or if it came in late, they could have bumped the story and given the journalist more time to add more uh, reporting and evidence. Something doesn't smell right there. So excuse me if I have a hard time believing Graydon Carter when he says denies something categor categorically did not happen when it seems like he has a little allergy to the truth when it comes to the timeline of why uh, Vanity Fair never included the allegations against Epstein in that early 2000s piece. Somebody ain't telling the truth. And when it comes to Bill Clinton, listen, might he have not actually gone into the office of Vanity Fair and physically, personally tried to kill any story about allegations into Epstein? Possibly. He might have not. That doesn't mean he didn't, through intermediaries, communicate or reach out to try and kill the story. Happens all the time. But there's a lot of smoke when it comes to Bill Clinton. Unfortunately, I expect the media is going to drop coverage of this very soon.